Hey there YouTube, Chaos Cuber here. Today I'm going to teach you how to solve this puzzle right here. This is the Shangshao Gigamorphix. Without further ado, let's get right into this little tips and tricks video. Okay, so basically I filmed this exact same video yesterday night at around 2 a.m. It's now around 2 a.m. I was editing that video. It is not up to par. It was not super informative. It was too long. I value quality on my I value quality content on my channel, and I also cannot speak. So, <laughs> without further ado, let's get right into this. This is going to be a fairly comprehensive tips and tricks guide on how to solve the Gigamorphics. This is going to both rely on your skill in solving the Master Morphics. You are going to have to be, know how to solve one of those fairly well. And also the 5x5. As you can see, 5x5, if you cannot solve a 5x5 correctly every single time, and a Master Morphix very well, do not attempt to solve the Gigamorphix. Go learn those better first. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to actually point out is the difference between a 5x5 and a Gigamorphix. If you have solved a Master Morphix before, I'm sure you know some of those differences, but the main thing is going to be every single one of these centerpieces has an orientation. Also... As you can see, this is a five-layered cube in this axis. It's also four-colored and a triangular shape. This is the top layer. This is your cross. And as you can see, with our centers here, these do not have orientation. If I move this up, these all still align. If I move like some random piece, I move it over and I move another piece up, it's still aligned. So this is not how this puzzle works. In this case, these pieces misalign all the time and all that. So they all have orientation is basically what I'm trying to say. So that's a couple, one of the different things, and obviously it's a four color triangular cube, but without further ado, let's get this scrambled up and let's get in to the solving tutorial. I'm going to try to do this all in one take, and I'm also going to try to do it in a fairly organized and quick manner, so this video is not going to be like super, super long. Hopefully this ends up being around 15 minutes, so we'll see. I'm going to fast forward and skip to a scrambled cube. Okay, so I'm going to call that a scramble. I think that is a pretty good one. So without further ado, what do we do first on the Gigamorphix? Well, I'm just going to do this and you can follow along if you want. Basically, I'm going to start on the yellow and red center. Which basically, what I mean by center, is this middle section of nine pieces right in the center. As you can see on this 5x5, we're going to start with the same nine on the Gigamorphix. And basically, I'm going to start by making a bar like this, all lined up. So the way you're going to do that, basically, as you saw right there, I took this yellow piece from here, I moved it, and I put it right there. The reason I did that is so it lines up with the yellow color here. There are ways we can put one where it will not line up. You'll be able to feel it. It just does not line up. There's like a gap there and a gap there. You want the yellow piece to match up, so make sure you put in the correct yellow piece where it is aligned and matching with that. You can do this on either side of the yellow bar, but basically you want to make a one by three bar all the way across there. As you can see, we have a red piece in that spot right there, but it's not matching also, so we have to find a different red piece, move it into there, and see if we can get that to match. As you can see, that one's flush, that one matches, that is good. So basically, after you have this bar right here, here are the pieces you're going to have to find for this top center of the Gigamorphix. Basically, as you can see, the red and yellow piece right here, there's going to be another red and yellow piece here, and another red and yellow piece here. There are going to be two yellow pieces right here, and two red pieces right here. So, in the method that I use, basically, I start by building a bar, which in this case, I'm going to look for a red bar to go right there, and then a red and yellow piece to go on top of it. As you can see, right here, we have a red and yellow and a red piece aligned already, so I'm just going to find another red piece, bring it over, see if it aligns. It does align it, and bring it up. That was super simple. Let's do the other one here. Next up, we need a yellow bar. There's already one built here. So let's see if that aligns with the other red and yellow piece. So let's look around the cube here for a minute. It's actually in the top layer right there. So let's try and align that with the yellow bar and see if it matches. It will not always match, but most of the time it will. Also, I'm having a couple catching issues as just standard with this Gigamorphix, just how it turns. As you can see, when we move that down, it does match. It does line up, and that's good. So now we have our bottom center. Hopefully you have that now, and hopefully that all worked out for you. Okay, so now we're going to work on our second center here. I'm just going to do that move to align this piece. It also happened to align that one. We don't need that. We're looking for the one by three bar. Next up, put a green piece into place. This one does not match, so that's not the correct one. Find another green piece, put it in place, and match it up. As you can see, that is the correct one. It's flush. It works. Next up, we're going to start with either a blue or a green bar. 
So I'm going to start with the green bar. As you can see, I've made a green bar right here of two that are flush, they match. We're looking for a blue and green piece, which as you can see, if you rotate that up, it's flush, but doesn't match. Blue clashes with the green, so that's not the correct blue and green piece. Let's look for the other one right here, and conveniently, it's right here. It matches, it fits. Let's move it up to here and see if that all works out. It does. Could rotate out of the way and put it back down so we don't mess up our bottom center there. So I'm sure you know how to do that if you're tackling a Gigamorphix. Next up here, we're making a blue bar. As you can see, we have one right here. Let's see if this one works out. It's all flush, it all works, but let's see if it fits with this right here. As you can see, it fits. Here is where we run into our first issue. Obviously, you can't rotate up like that because that destroys your bottom bar there. And you can't do the normal 5x5 move where you move it up on the wrong side and then move it down because that'll mess that all up. So what do you do instead? I'm sure some of you already know how to do this, but basically, instead of bringing the bar up and then rotate, you bring the slot down. So basically, you bring the slot down from the top with this adjacent to that or parallel to that. I don't know exactly which. Then you pull it back up, and as you can see, it's now solved. The bottom's not wrecked. And let me do that again. If it's in this orientation, you cannot pull that down and then put it because there's no bar here. It's on the bottom now. So you have to rotate out of the way, pull that down, put it back up. Pretty simple. That's how it is. Hopefully, you have the top and the bottom now. If you don't, go back. Hopefully, you can understand it. Next up here, this is actually exactly the same process to build the next two centers. The last two are going to be a little bit more complicated. I'll get into that once I get to it, but I'm just going to speed through building these last two centers here. Or to say the last two before the last centers. So as you can see, I now have one bar. I'm going to insert that like that. Fairly easy, no issues there. I have a green bar right here. Let's rotate that down to the bottom face. Rotate this down and move that up. As you can see, no issues there. Rotates into place very nicely. Next up here, we already have this done, except that blue does not align, so we're gonna have to put a different blue in its place. That one also does not align, move it. That one, that one does align. So now we have a bar here. We have this bar already half created here, so let's find a piece that goes there. And there we go, that one does not line up in that direction. Let's turn it over, put it up there, it lines up in that direction. Next up here, we need a yellow bar to complete the last of the last four centers, or the last of the last two of the last four centers. I don't know the exact terminology there. Just trying to rush through this video and get it done here in a fairly quick amount of time. If you have any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. I will make sure to get to those and answer them. There are going to be some odd cases you might run into. Hopefully you can get through them with intuition or something else besides that, other external knowledge, but it is what it is. That's just kind of how it works. And actually, I mislocated this one somehow. So there you go. Once I put this back up, we are done with all but our last two centers. Last two centers, there are going to be some tricks to know. First of all, I'm going to make the cross on both of the centers. The way I'm going to do this is fairly intuitive. Basically, I'm going to find a piece in the bottom that rotates up. It aligns. I'm going to move it over and move it back down. And then, as you can see, we have this one lined up. These two are not, but I'm just going to finish this top center here. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that method where you move the hole down. I'm going to use that method where you move the spot down. In this case, I'm actually going to preserve this edge right here. So I'm going to move this down into its correct slot. I'm going to turn it over and move it back up to align that. As you can see, this is one of the cases you'll get in doing the last cross here. Basically, these two are misaligned and not in the correct spot. Very easy remedy to that. Basically, you're going to have to know how to do commutators and do commutators well to solve the gigamorphics as well as you would do it on a 5x5 or a 7x7 or any of that. It's very simple, but if you don't know how to do commutators, go learn that, come back here. It's very important for this. Okay, so I'm just going to go through a couple different cases for the last two crosses here in a couple different orders. Basically, you're going to have to use an order of commutators to switch these so that they match on the second cross. Once you have one done, then the second one's going to be the one that you're gonna to have to commutate. So in this case, I'm going to actually move this to a green side so I can commutate this piece right here. Basically, this piece needs to go right here, which in this case, we're gonna move this to a side where it matches up, and then we're going to perform that commutator. They'd usually do. And as you can see, that switches those two pieces. Here's another different example of a case that you could get. If these two pieces here are switched, 
which in this case, basically this one and this one do not align. They're in the correct spots, but they're not lined up correctly. And the way you do that again, you rotate this to any green side, as you can see like this, when you rotate it up, it has to align. If it does not align, you're gonna have to rotate over to like that. And then you do the commutator again. And there you go. As you can see, that messed up some other things. So now we're gonna do that commutator again to move this piece. If it aligns to the top, that's basically what this does. I'll show you what this commutator does here in just a minute to get this back. Basically what this commutator does, it takes the piece that's right here and moves it to right there, but it only works and it won't mess up the top if this piece aligns right here. So basically if the piece, when they're misaligned like this, if you move this up and it does not align there in the same shape, which this might be a little bit confusing. You might have to figure this out on your own a little bit more. But when you have the L on top, the green L and the green L on the bottom, if you move this up and it does not align, you're going to have to do this thing a couple times to get it to work perfectly because basically you want to move this piece to one that aligns to and then there's going to have to be a green piece on the top there for it to work correctly. Okay, so I'm struggling on explaining these last two here a little bit, so I'm not sure exactly I'm going to cut this all together. Again, this is the difficulty. There is some difficulty with the gigamorphics, and I still don't have a full grasp on all of it. It's, I don't know. Shouldn't be doing a tutorial quite so soon, I guess. But anyway, basically, the trick to gain both centers fixed is commutators. And the commutators you're going to use are ones that are going to be non-destructive to the top cross and only work on the bottom cross. So basically the way to make it non-destructive to the top cross, you want to make sure the piece you're moving up to a place with always lines up with this. You're going to be using a series of different commutators depending on your bottom cross thing to move this piece to there and this piece to there. It's basically a cycle of sorts and you're going to have to figure out how that works in different cases. It's always going to work, but you might have to play around with it a little bit to get it exactly correct. So now after you have the cross on both the top and the bottom, hopefully you're able to figure that out. Next, we're going to move on to the final edges here, which as you can see, or the final corners, I should say, as you can see, we have six right here. So I'm just going to start by eliminating a couple of those. First off, I'm going to commutate this edge up to that spot where it needs to go by doing just the standard commutator algorithm. As you can see right here, get a couple little catches. But as you can see, now that piece is right up there. So now we're going to commutate this piece, this blue piece up to where it needs to go right there. And as you can see, after the standard commutator algorithm, it is right up where it needs to go. Now we have three left in this bottom section. Here's how commutators work on the corners. Basically, you have to align this piece with a green piece, first of all. So let's go to this side. Basically, when you line up with that and move it over, it's going to move this piece from here to there. It also works in the bottom face. If you move it up to here and it lines up exactly like that, it's going to move this piece from here to there. So you have to work with the at set of moves to move this piece exactly where you want it to go. So in this case, I'm going to use one commutator to move this piece from here to there, which in turn will move this piece from here to there and it'll have those two. So actually the way I'm going to do this a little bit differently, first of all, I'm going to mix this up. I'm going to move this piece from here to there and then from there to there. So let's do that here quickly. But basically it uses that one theory that moves those pieces in either direction like I showed using commutators. So as you can see, I'm done with that there. I actually almost overshot it there because I wasn't really thinking. But anyway, now we need to move this piece to there. It's basically just going to be like a shuffle. So now I'm going to move it to this side where it still lines up. You don't want to mess up that top face when you're doing these commutators. And I'm just going to finish up this commutator right here. As you can see, now this is here. And now we can move it from here to there. So let's just do that one like this. And it's just going to take a little bit of trial and error on your side. It might take a little bit of time to figure out exactly. It's pretty logical. And eventually you'll end up right here at this case, hopefully. Basically, these two pieces are switched. That's where most people get stumped and that's where most people end up. Here is exactly how you solve that. Basically, you're going to rotate this, since this is a red piece here, the solid piece, you're gonna take that, rotate up to the red face. It'll either be here or here. And depending on that, you're either going to rotate it to this side 
or to this side, I mean the top face. So basically this is always going to be pointing upwards when you do this commutator. This side is either going to rotate where this piece is here, if the red piece is here, or it's going to rotate to here like it is if the red piece is here. And then you just simply do a commutator. That literally is all it takes to fix that final issue. So if you didn't get that one more time here, basically you rotate, you know, let's reset it here. Basically, when you have this case where these two are switched, you're going to rotate to any red side, since this is a red piece that we have as the final one. If you had a green piece, you rotate to a green side, etc. So basically, you're going to rotate it with this pointing up, the two wrong pieces pointing up, and you're going to align this when you move it up so that it aligns with this top thing, and that's how you do it. You do the commutator from there, you either do it on the right side or the left side, depending on which side this red piece is on. So the red piece on the left, you rotate this to the left, and you do the commutator on the left, exactly like this. It's very simple, and that's exactly how it works. So now, hopefully our center's done on the Gigamorphix. Let's move on to edge pairing. This is the simplest step of this entire thing. Since there are a lot of the same color edges, it should go by very quickly. So if you know how to do it on a 5x5, it's exactly as simple on the Gigamorphix. You want to make sure you have all your centers aligned on the top and bottom before you go into this. Otherwise, you might mess it up. But I mean, there's really not a lot that can go wrong here. I use Free Slice to finish this up, and it's, very, it's a very quick step. Basically, there's three different types of pieces that you can match up of each color, and that would be a top, a bottom, and a center, and you're just going to have to figure out the orientation those go on. It's very intuitive and very self-explanatory. So let's quickly get through this, and I'll show you how to do the last four edges, and in particular, the last two edges if you run into that case. So that can also be a little thing on the Gigamorphix. So let's see here, just working on finishing up these edges. And let's see, we need to do a, put this down there and then do a slice over, do a flipping algorithm. It's very, very simple. It's just like normal edge pairing on a five by five. So you have to have a bit of a grasp around how all the pieces work. And as you can see, we're coming to the end here. Let's get this one in. And there we go. It's free slice as normal. Okay, put this piece right here. Slice over, flipping out of them. It's basically just that case where you have that piece around top of each other. That's just how I choose to pair them up. And we're down to our last, our fifth edge per se, our last for the final four. Okay. And there you go. That took a little bit longer than it should have. And actually, I think I did one extra there. So whatever. Basically, now, with free slice at least, you just realign your centers. And you should be to your last four edges, as you can see right here. So now I'm just going to finish up with those edges, as you would in normal last four edges. Stop at the parity if you get any. That's going to be the one thing that's different on a Gigamorphix from normal edges. You're going to mess up your center orientation if you do the parity algorithm incorrectly. So let's just finish these up here. As you can see, I'm just getting the blue one. And let's see, let's put this up here. Slice back. Um, let's see, let's get one into position for that. And there'll be to our final two here. In this case, it doesn't look like I'm going to get edge parity, but I'm just going to force it here, I think. So basically, there you go, when I slice back, now we're at edge parity, which is a little bit different one than I usually do. So let me get this to the case that it should be at, which let me see here. Basically, I'll just swap that one in and let's do that. Okay, and let's see, let's do this. I was gonna get you to the edge parity algorithm. You should know how to solve any of these other little things because they're not parity. Okay. So now we're to edge parity. It's a little bit different because they're the same color, but basically here's what you do instead of doing the parity algorithm. Usually you usually you do the left, U2, 
left, and so on for the parity algorithm. That will flip these two bars. It'll basically flip the center in the center, and that'll mess up your whole thing. So here's how you do it instead. Basically, it's very, very simple. You're going to slice over to pair one of them up. You're going to find a red piece in this case, because this is the color of this one here. And you're going to find this piece right here, which piece is it on that side? It's the top piece. You're going to rotate one of those pieces in and you're going to slice back. I'm going to do this with a different color just to make sure you're not confused with that. Let me do that again. Basically slice over. Okay. So there you go. We're back to the parity algorithm this time with different colors. As you can see with the green and the yellow, you will not want to do this parity algorithm here. Here's all you do. Basically you slice over with the green, fixing the green, and then you note this top piece right here. This is the piece that needs to go there. You're going to find another yellow piece on the cube. You're going to rotate, put that exact piece in the top, put it down there and slice back. As you can see, that fixes both of those and avoids parity entirely. So now I guess this is the end of the walkthrough solve section. Once I get this whole thing solved, because we're basically to master morphic stage, I guess on the gigamorphics. So this should be pretty simple. Just use whatever method you use. I use kind of like a F2L plus beginners method. So I guess I'm just going to do that and finish this up. This should be pretty simple. You should know how to solve a master morphics. If you're going into the gigamorphics solve, if you don't, I don't know, what are you doing here? Go learn how to solve a master morphics first. So anyway, I'm just making my cross right now. And I guess that I'm going to end the video for this whole thing. Hopefully this is helpful. Like I said, leave any questions in the comment section below. I'm tired. It's late. I might've missed something. So make sure to leave that if you have any more questions and hopefully this was helpful to you. Okay, so there you go, we have the cross. Now I'm just gonna do my F2L, which this goes right there, it's going to be a green. So let's see here, put that on that side, down, and there you go. There's that pair. I need to find the small red piece, which is right here, rotate that around. There's that pair. Okay, and we're going to do that one right there. Just kind of me talking myself through this here as usual. Okay, here we go. And there we go, we're, back, we're down to the final F2L pair, which that one's already put together. Just insert that. Now we're to last layer. Just do whatever last layer method you usually do. Which in my case, I just use super beginner's method, I believe it would be called. I don't know, just the beginner's method you usually learn for solving a master morphics that's based on beginner's method for the Rubik's cube. It's very simple. Just has some corner flips at the end and then it's done. Okay, let's see here. In this case, let's just keep doing it on this side. It rotates a one in there. Okay, as you can see, now we have a solved one. One more time. It's taking longer than usual. And there you go. Now we're down to one more corner flipped, which is the corner flipping algorithm on this one side here. And of course, you're going to have to go and flip a, another one of these here, which these super tiny little things are also corners. Okay, and there you go. We have a solved gigamorphics. Okay, well that was better than my first attempt at this tutorial. It is super late. I'm gonna have to edit this and get this up. Hopefully enjoyed. Hopefully the couple people who actually watched this and need to get something out of it got something out of it. Like I said, ask with any questions in the comments below. I tried to really cover all the different cases in here, but it's kind of trial and error and it took a lot of trial and error on my part to get this down in the first place. The commutators are basically the only thing that you really need to get down. And it's just basically like a cycle of pieces between two different layers when you do those commutators. So anyway, hopefully that was helpful. Helpful. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe below. If you enjoyed, subscribe or I mean, follow my Instagram if you want to see some interesting cubing, photography, and all that kind of stuff. Linked in the description below. Chaos Cuber out. Goodbye.